First John chapter two, verses 26 through 27 say, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Happy Thursday, and welcome back to another episode of Walk Talks as we continue our study through the book of 1 John. We're in a portion where John is speaking to the believer about the danger of the Antichrist and their false doctrine. And we noted earlier in the week, the day of the Antichrist, the departure of the Antichrist, the deficiency of the Antichrist, the denial of the Antichrist, and the destiny of the Antichrist in verses 18 through 23. John goes on to contrast true, genuine believers with the Antichrist by saying that the difference between believer and non-believer, between believer and Antichrist, is who remains and who departs, who continues and who quits. Of course, the Antichrist are the ones who quit, who depart, who disassociate themselves with the truth. In contrast to that, true believers continue. They remain. And we noted yesterday the use of the word abide or remain or continue that's used in verses 24 through 28. And yesterday in verses 24 and 25, we noted that we are to continue in the word of truth. And in these verses, verses 26 and 27, the call is here to continue in the spirit of truth. Verse 26 helps us to see the intent of John's writing in this section. And he once again reminds us that he's writing this portion of his letter concerning those people that are trying to deceive you, trying to draw you away from the truth. And he introduces the anointing that we noted earlier in the text with the contrast word, but, but the anointing which ye have received. As we discovered earlier in verse 20, this anointing simply means the giving of the Holy Spirit. It's John's way of describing what the Apostle Paul calls the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is the comforter, the spirit that indwells every believer. There's two things that I really want to emphasize to you today in verse 27. First of all, that as believers, in contrast to the Antichrist, the spirit is in you. He begins by saying, you have received of him the anointing and the anointing in verse 27 abideth in you. He is present. Isn't this a wonderful statement that at the moment of salvation, believers get all of the spirit. You notice that he doesn't say you got part of it. (laughs) You'll get a second blessing eventually. No, no, no. That's not what he says at all. He says you have received this anointing fully from the day of your salvation. I want you to notice what that means for us as believers. The spirit is in you. First of all, he is in you. He dwells within us to teach us. In verse 27, the text says that you don't need any other man to teach you, but as the same anointing, the spirit, here it is, teacheth you of all things. Now, this is an interesting statement. John says, you don't need anybody to teach you. So that must mean we don't need pastors. We don't need preachers. We don't need Bible colleges. We don't need Bible class. Is that what John is saying? Well, absolutely not. If that's what John was saying, that they didn't need any other person to teach them, why would John spend so much time writing this letter to teach these believers? What John is doing here is actually contrasting the message of the Antichrist with the message of spirit-filled, spirit-guided pastors and teachers who preach this, what the Bible says. We know from other portions of scripture that God has divinely ordered pastors and teachers and evangelists and in the past prophets and apostles for this, Ephesians 4 and verse 12, the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body. So what John is saying is that you don't need anybody to give you a new interpretation of the truth. The spirit is the great interpreter. He is the one who brings illumination to the word of truth that we looked at yesterday in verses 24 and 25. John 14 and verse 26 says, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 
whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So we can have confidence that the Spirit teaches us. And then second of all, we can have confidence that the Spirit is teaching us truth. He is true. He is not a liar. Verse 27 says, he teaches us all things and it is truth and is no lie. What the Spirit teaches us, who the Spirit is, is total truth. First John 5, 6 says, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness because Emphatically, he says, the spirit is truth. Jesus said to his disciples that I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. And in John 15 and verse 26, the comforter is come who I will send to you from the father. Jesus said, even the spirit of truth. And finally, in John 16 and verse 13, how be it when he and Jesus describes the spirit as the spirit of truth. When he has come, he will guide you into all truth. It is the operation of the Holy Spirit of God in our life to lead us and guide us into truth, to illuminate the word of God to us. So as we continue in the spirit of truth, we ought to know that the spirit is in us. If we are true believers, true Christians, the spirit of God indwells us. But the end of verse 27 teaches us by imperative form that we are to abide in him verse 27 says. So not only is the spirit in you, but the command is you be in the spirit. To abide in the spirit is to obey the clear commands of scripture and to produce the fruit of walking in the spirit. As Paul outlines in Galatians, to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We ought to yield our will to his guidance, to his leading. Paul said in Galatians 5 16, walk in the spirit. Live every day with an awareness that the Spirit is seeking to guide you and lead you. Now, the Spirit of God does not show up in our dreams and in our visions and give us some new revelation from God. That's not what the Spirit does. No, the Spirit of God does what Jesus prayed that the Spirit of God would do in our lives. Sanctify them through the truth. So the Word of God coupled with the Spirit of God working in our lives, enables us to not just know the truth, but to live the truth, to be sanctified by the truth. Can I encourage you today to apply these two particular actions to your life? First of all, to obey how the Spirit leads you into the truth of the Word of God. Obey the clear commands of Scripture. And then yield yourself to the leading of God's word and his spirit in you. Continue to walk in the spirit and not give in to the lusts of the flesh.